An orange weapon? Well, I'll be. Bonus radiant damage? A cheat death mechanic? Free blinds against enemies? Sunbeam? Ladies, gentlemen, and adventurers of all ages, today we're here to talk about one thing and one thing only. And we don't often make videos about singular items in a game unless they are a particularly big deal, so that should give you an idea that this, well, is in fact a particularly big deal. This weapon is the Blood of Lathander. It is nuts as far as how strong it is, and one of its best positions to be held in is by your healer. No matter what class you've gone for yourself, no matter what your party composition is, you're going to have a healer. That's just sort of how it works. It's just something that makes the game function correctly, and if your healer is using this weapon, it will make your life way easier. All of that to say, you definitely want this weapon in your possession. No matter what you are personally playing, you want to have this weapon, and someone in your party should absolutely be using it. I will try to do this in a somewhat spoiler-friendly way, I'll show you locations to go and give a warning before I show you the actual solution in case you want to work it all out for yourself, but of course aside from those warnings, I'll show you the entire process of getting this today all for yourself. Starting off then, you need to have exited the wilderness part of the story and entered the mountain Mountain Pass area. This place is rated for about level 5, so if you are level 5 already, you've just been doing all the side stuff, you should have no problem just beelining this as an objective if you'd like to. Once here, you need to get to Rosy Morn Monastery on the northern side of this area. This is easily done with a short walk, or you can interact with the cable lift along the way to get there even faster with a bit of a strength check. Then you have a bit of a parkour path once you arrive at the monastery. Just follow all the movements that I'm doing here and it'll get you through. The first time that you come through here, there will be some combat with some kobolds, there will be some barricades that you have to break down, but this is the path that you want to follow in general, even aside from that. Once you make it up to the second floor, you want to enter the large ornate chamber over here. In here, there are multiple, essentially altars or pedestals, whatever you want to call them, four of them, each with stones on them. This, my friends, is a puzzle. And I love puzzles. That said, technically speaking, you can get the weapon that we're after without doing the puzzle. It just means killing a lot of people and maybe not very intentionally. So generally, I recommend doing the puzzle unless you want to really add a lot of blood to your playthrough. With that mentioned, if you want to work it out for yourself, skip ahead to the time on screen for the next steps to follow after completing it. Otherwise, keep watching this for the puzzle solution. If you interact with the middle area here, the stained glass panel, you should get the idea that you are simply trying to place weapons on different pedestals in the room related to which monitor monastery leader was actually depicted in the stained window glass facing that pedestal. There is already one of these with a sword on it and its stones are glowing up nice and pretty which tells you it's in the right place, so of course your follow up goal should be to find the appropriate weapons for the other three pedestals. These weapons are a rusty mace, a battle axe, and a war hammer, but it can't just be any of these weapons, especially because you probably won't have the specific versions thereafter, you're looking for one specifically found in the monastery area. So essentially you are being sent on a slight scavenger hunt, which if you are actively searching everywhere with your own eyes can be a little bit irritating and time consuming, but of course it gets much easier once I open up my map and show you, hey, these are the three locations that you're going. Pretty simple, right? Obviously this makes it better and it's definitely a big help considering just how often the distance the mace is in the bottom corner, for example. That said, for more specific pathing from the puzzle room itself, you can simply jump out of the window on the eastern side and travel along the balcony, jumping over the roots, enter back through another window to find the first weapon guarded by an enemy. Stealth it or kill them, up to you, but you want to get the battle axe it's guarding. Then if you head back to the puzzle room and back out into the main hall. If you cross over this way over here, you'll see some vines leading up to the roof. Climb these, and then at the top of here, you'll find another couple of enemies guarding the Warhammer, which is in their nest. Simply stealth it and grab it or kill them. There's conversation options too if you want to. It's your choice how you handle it, but you want to get the weapon. After that, you want to take the vines that are right beside the enemies and go towards the Githyanki Christ just a little bit, heading down the stairs in the backside here, and then actually slip out of the building in the southeast corner of the room and simply walk up the hill outside to find a grave. Because, you guessed it, it's great. Grave robbing time. You're right, Bender. Grave robbing is fun. If you read the gravestone, it'll tell you that it was one of the leaders of the monastery, so, you know, just get in that mound of dirt and actually get what's out of there. You will need some method of digging to get through here. Of course, it is a mound of dirt. Shovels are by far the easiest one. You can get one from pretty much any vendor for like two gold a piece. They're really cheap, not a big deal. You should always have one of these with you for if you come across a mound of dirt. Once you have these weapons, bring them back to the puzzle room and place them in their correct slot. The rusty mace goes in the southeast corner pedestal. The warhammer goes on the northeast one, and then the battle axe in the final slot is on the southwest. Once all of these pedestals have lit up, this will reveal a small cubby hold in the back side of the room with the Dawnmaster's Crest item in a pouch as well as a note with more instructions as for what to do. From here, you want to travel along a similar path that we did earlier. We're going down to the crèche, so just follow me down here, down the stairs, and you want to interact with this statue in the giant open room that's right in the front of the winding staircase, and then it'll give you a little bit more information. After that, you can head down said staircase on the north end of the room and find yourself in the Githyanki crèche. There are multiple ways 
ways to do this. You can just kill everyone here if you really feel a bit blood hungry. You can diplomacy your way through as well. And personally, I tend to at least try diplomacy first. And the actual room that you want to reach is all the way on the northwestern point of this area through a path that you access in the captain's room on the east. If you want to get through diplomatically, you'll either need some really good conversational skills with the captain or a really effective pickpocket to steal the shard from the captain and then a good distraction to get through the barrier. After that, head to the western side of the northern chamber in this area to this room that looks to just be sort of full of junk, point the southern statue towards the west to represent the sunset, and the northern statue to the east to represent the sunrise. Sometimes these statues can get a little bit stuck, so apply some elbow grease if you need to, damage them a little bit to use something like a cantrip, just be careful not to actually break them, don't use anything too strong. Once rotated the right direction, a chamber will open behind them, and you will have a Duel of Fate style barrier gauntlet in front of you. These are powered by crystals hanging around the place, simply destroy them one at a time while avoiding the sort of alarm system that's in the room as you see fit to get by them. These are their locations as you can see my going through it. The first one is hanging right in front of you, the second one behind the wall on the left side, then the final one across on the rocks below to the right. After you've gotten rid of all of these, the barriers will be gone and you can move forward. The alarm system will still be active though, so do be careful. Once you are in this big main area here, which should be quite clear, obviously, you will have a device with an insert option in the middle, stick the crest in, and voila, the Blood of Lathander Legendary Mace will go right into your inventory. Things don't really get stronger than legendary items in this setting, it just is exceedingly powerful. So this makes it one of the strongest weapons in the entire game, especially when you consider what its actual bonus effects are as well. Not to mention that you can get this as early as level five, quite early on, if you just wanna go that way and actually pick it up, put that together and you have an extreme power boost just waiting for you really early in your journey that should make a lot of the game feel a fair bit easier. As far as the actual use of this weapon then, it has 1d6 bludgeoning damage and a bonus 1d4 radiant, so 2 to 10 as a base with a split of damage types too. It also has plus 3 from the weapon enchantment on it, which means that your attack rolls and damage rolls will just get plus 3 even aside from your own character stats. The cheat death mechanic that is on it happens once per long rest, making it so when attack would otherwise down you, it instead heals you for 2d6, and any allies within 9 meters also get 1d6 of healing, which is pretty incredible. On top of this, the weapon blinds any undead or fiend type enemies that are even standing close to you, which makes this extremely strong against that enemy type, both making them have a harder time hitting you, but also giving you an easier time hitting them. Then of course it also lets you use Sunbeam once per long rest, which is an absolutely ridiculous 6d8 forward beam spell that also blinds anything that it hits. It is a nasty amount of damage, high area of effect potential, great utility, and that's just one part of this incredible weapon, and why you should probably make a point of picking it up yourself. Personally, I would also make a point of getting this in a peaceful way as possible, especially if it's your first visit to the Yankee Crash, it's sort of hard to just run right to the end and grab this thing, as there are things that you should do in this area. There are people you should interact with, stories to experience, quests to complete. So try to preserve this rather than just beelining the legendary and, you know, just sort of enjoy the experience, you know? And that's just about it, everyone. Everything you need to know about the Blood of Lathander legendary mace in Baldur's Gate 3 and how you can get it extremely early on in your journey compared to where you might expect to find a legendary weapon in a D&D type system. I hope you've enjoyed this breakdown and let us know in the comments down below if you find any similar things to this and we'll, of course, share it with everyone in the community so that we can all get in on the fun and enjoy it. Like if you liked the video, subscribe at the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.